gonna be fast. So we're gonna be talking about restoring a play field and the whole process of it in half an hour. So first of all, we, we need to have some idea of what's uh, the color theory because the, the biggest problem when you're restoring an old play field is matching colors. And, and why is it so complicated and what you need to understand how mixing color works. That's essential. Then we're gonna see how you prepare your play field, what kind of products you can use, what kind of uh, paints, inks, brushes, all, all the stuff. If you haven't seen my last year's seminar, which our friend Martin recorded, <laughs> there's gonna be a QR code there and you can just capture it with your cell phone and that will be, it's an hour seminar and uh, there's more explanation around what to do with the whole game, but there's more detail, detailed information about play field, cleanup and all this stuff. So check it out. And uh, basically when we talk about color theory is like uh, there's two basic systems and one is the additive color system and the other one is the sus substantive. When we talk about additive color, give me a second. Uh, I'm fighting my computer. There we go. Okay. Uh, Colors are what we see with the eye. It's the, f the reflection of the light in any object. And what, it's what it brings back to your eye is the color that we see. So when you have, you know, this is the additive system. When you have no lights at all, you have the basic three colors are red, green, and blue. And that's what you're going to see in all TV screen, projectors, all the stuff. You're mixing three lights, green, red, and blue. So when you add the three colors, you get white. That's why we see on this screen, on your computer, everything works the same way. You see, oh, those are the pixels. You see, this is green, green, and blue. That's exactly, no more than that. That makes white light. If the different levels of each color is what will bring the other colors. And if you see, or what, what it's called, the secondary colors are magenta, yellow, and cyan. When you print, the difference is that you start with white. You have a white paper, a white whatever, uh, and the play field is a, a wood that it has a, uh, a white ink coat in the base, and then the other colors are added. Originally, when it was all silk screened, every single color was done in each pass. You know, you have this kind of red, this kind of orange, whatever, and all the colors were a set of colors prepared for that play field. Uh, when you go printing, you have this. I, if you see it in your printer at home or whatever, th this is the kind of color that you have. Give me a minute. So when you mix these three colors, yellow, uh, magenta, and cyan, you, get, you can see there's green, red, and blue. They are all the, all the other colors that were the primaries when you got the lights. And when you mix them all, you got black. So this is what you have to have in mind when you have to mix colors for uh, preparing a paint for play doing a play field. So most of the times, it, depending on what, which materials you use, wh which kind of paint you use, you might not even find cyan, for instance. If you go to a paint shop, you will s uh, find red, green, blue, whatever, uh, yellow, and different tints. Um, the problem most of the times is the, the saturation of each, each color. So um, we're gonna be go through all the materials, all the, the, the different types of paints that you will use. Uh, most of the times, I try to use um, oil-based enamels because when you use a nice brush, it doesn't leave strokes. When you use uh, acrylic paints, the acrylic is more like a paste. So you have brushes in there. So there's very difficult to this guy's the brush and also the brush stroke. And also the problem is that when you use acrylic paints, most of the time it uh, darkens when it dries. 
So it's complicated to match the color. You, you have to be all the time like using an, an, error, um, an error gun or something to dry the paint and see how it looks. And even when you clear coat it, most of the time it will change. But even seeing that, uh, when you use, for instance, on let's say a getaway or uh, an Adams family that have those fluorescent colors, those you know oranges and all the kind of colors, you have most of the time you can find uh, uh, old base paints that will work, but they are very thin. Then you need to add a white base over that. It's kind of complicated. So the best thing thing to do there is to use acrylics. And you can get the same exact fluorescent color by mixing, let's say, most of the time you have an orange and red, yellow and green fluorescent. Let's stop this, it's done. And so you have to use whatever it gonna brings you the best results. I feel comfortable working with animals, you know, and you have to have in mind that you have to have good brushes. I'm gonna show you a couple of stuff that I think is gonna be most of the time they ask me, oh, what do you use for painting this? The, the, the good thing uh, is what works best for you. So what you feel comfortable working with and what gives you the best results. So uh, you will find a lot of people saying, oh, this is what you have to do. So there's no a simple rule for that. You have to be comfortable. You have to try different things in, and see what you, you can get and try. That's the only way. I'm going to show you. For instance, these are a small cans of uh, animal paint, which you, c you can find it easily on Amazon, for instance. You know, this is small cans, even have a, a ball in there, you can shake it. This is, has a great flow. You can even use this small rustoleums, uh, crayon, sorry. There's rustoleum in big cans too. But the problem here is like y you can find, for instance, you have magenta in this. So you can get all the colors with these ones. And I couldn't find cyan in this, this kind of paint. So sometimes some blue colors are very hard to get because they have a, a strong cyan tint. For instance, if you're gonna get green out of blue and yellow, you have to think that this is has cyan and magenta already on it. So when you add in yellow, you add in yellow to over a cyan and magenta colors, it tends to go gray. That's the problem that you can get the, the r exactly the same brilliance, the same color saturation, because this already has two colors in it. It's, that's the main difference. So the best thing will be to use the, 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 um, the primaries for printing. That's what you can use on acrylics. This, I'm gonna show you some acrylics. The acrylics are very easy to find. And you will find, for instance, this is a blue, it's a really sharp blue. This works perfectly. And you got cyan, yellow, all the stuff. There are several brands of this. This have no problem. You can find it everywhere. And Walmart and any any place. But the colors that you need are, are pretty pretty basics. You know, you don't have to have an infinite amount of of a range of colors because you can always make it with these three basic colors and then you can if uh, there are some colors that are more complicated you can find a specific one or one that goes near that but you know i have like s with this i can do everything every single color it's is that that complicated then all the things that you have to have in mind is this this kind of things these are used for instance for um models you know, plastic models. This uh, a vinyl tape is, th this is a real thing, you know? And it could shape every single curve. So you, I sometimes I have a, <laughs> you know, a really good hand, sometimes you can trust your hand because that was printed by a machine. So you can trust your hand. And when you get smaller things, this is ideal. You know, they have several different, this is uh, paper tape. This is really small. I don't know if you can see it there. Really, really small. And you can mask everything with that, and that will help you a lot. Also, I'm going to show you. I got a huge set of this kind of rulers, and this kind of stuff is also so basic, you know, for doing the, the black lines and all the stuff. Some, some of the black lines can be done by hand, you know, but you have to be really skillful in that. But most of the time, what I, I try to do is, you know, this Posca markers, because 
uh, there, I've seen people working with Sharpies, and Sharpies uh, uh, fade with time, fade really badly with time. So you can trust Sharpies. They are easy to use, you have several colors, but they fade all the time. So blacks are not really blacks. These ones, for instance, these are paint markers. These are water-based. They work so really nice. There's a fine point, and you can do the black lines with that. It's pretty easy. So first of all, you go with all all the colors. Then you do the line art, the line art, you know, the fine details and all the stuff. And then you go uh, clear coding. I even have this ones. So I don't know if I don't know if anybody can see them. I've made it cut. These are, for instance, for most of the Bali 70s games, that mold, you know, arrows in several different sizes. This is the one that's. I'm going to throw away this in any minute. But everyone, I have circles that made this is PDG material printed several different sizes. So you have to find the way that you feel comfortable working with and have several tools to make it look as you don't even touch it. Um, regarding the process, you the first thing you have to do is to get the best of what you have, to clean it thoroughly, get all the mylars, vinyls, get all the debris, the, 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 the adhesive, the residue that's always there with mylar. I'm going to show you some processes there. And uh, what I mostly use for getting rid of, uh, well, I take mylar with heat. There's a big controversy too, because there's so many people using uh, the, the uh, freezing spray. I've done it several times. It doesn't work for me. I feel more comfortable with... Uh, with a heat gun and uh, a putty knife. So you have to follow slowly the material. You don't have to rush it. You don't have to peel it off. You have to put the putty knife be below that and go with the flow. This is a re really damaged play field. So this is the, the prep for, you know, the, the, the all the preliminary, preliminary things you have to do with the play field. In this case, I have to, you know, fill a problem <laughs> with her. And I, uh, I I split the glue to make it you know uh, come in between the parts so that, that one split. It's very complicated. This is a really heavy stuff. Most of that you don't we, you won't fi you won't have to face that. What I used to feel that the different levels. It, this is uh, there is some uh, good filler when you have a damage to the good itself. Sometimes you have to add some real good to fill the, the parts that are missing. When you have those uh, holes, the, the well, where the bolt goes through, like in the um, Adam's family chair, you know, they always get a smash all, all around. You have to use some kind of, uh, of um, or some nails or some kind of wood, anything that will make it sturdy. Because if you use a good filler, it will fall apart in a, in a few weeks. That, that won't work. You have to use some heavy stuff. Um, and then what you see in there in the pictures, I'll go a little bit back there, that white stuff is uh, um, a wall putty, you know, the one they use for drywalls. Th that's very easy to use and it's very thin. And you can, if you want uh, clear coat again, if you don't want to clear coat and you need just to do a small touch ups, this will uh, if apply a very thin layer with a putty knife and you can use a rag to take the, the parts around the hole. You, you will only have that white stuff on the place that you have the paint missing. It's very easy, you don't have to sand it, otherwise you will scratch the surface all around. So this is way easier to, to, to work with and also it's tender time. I've done play fields like, I've been doing this for 30 years and I've seen play fields doing, done in like, I don't know, 2005 and it looks just the same that I left them back then. Uh, in a, an eight ball deluxe or some those play fields that work a lot, you know. Uh, so this is what I do. This is what I feel comfortable. But it, I, I found it the most, you know, easy to work with and it gives the best results. This has been clear coded. This is a job like done like ten years ago. And I I I I I I do you know maintenance every single year and the machine looks perfectly. Yet, you know, this is the same play field that you've you've seen with the hole there. Then you see how this is, has a mylar there. Yeah, you can see this. This is the way that I do it. I don't know. Perhaps some people work fine with freezing gun, uh, freezing spray. That's okay. You know, you you have to try for yourself. I find it that most of the times, 
perhaps because I, I work always with playfields that heavily damage the the, the if I use a, f a freeze uh, spray, it will take you know all the the, the 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 paint away, and this is what I use to remove the the their adhesive uh, adhesive re residue. It, that's uh, spirits. You can s it's like mineral spirits. It's the best thing, and it won't it won't at uh, attack the paint. You know, the you can see it. You can, you know, fill the, the play field with that. You won't damage anything. It doesn't harm the the, the prints. It doesn't harm the the the, the coils, Nothing. So it works perfectly fine. It's harmless, and you get all get all the residue from there. Uh, I don't. I don't know if this this brand is here. I, I think you can find it. I th I think I find it some in some other countries there. But this is uh, uh, um, those um, cleaners, soft cleaners that use mostly in bathrooms. That will remove all the dirt, all the the oily stuff, and you will have a very dry play field. You know, because uh, for clear coating, you have to have a. Uh, um, a rough surface is it's too you know, brilliant or too shiny. It, the, the the any uh, no uh, no clear would attach heavily to that and it starts peeling off. That's what 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 you see. Uh, you've seen in some newer games too that you you know start pulling the uh, um, uh, adding the screws or some stuff and you see that spunk that does a plunk of of uh, clears that pops off you know that shouldn't happen because it should be perfectly attached to the the paints the inks everything back they have to be a, a single unit so you clean it this is water based then you just you know use a, 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 a damp cloth to wash it out and you, it's done this is the best that you can get and you will see the colors there uh, also you have to have in mind this thing uh, you will find Below the the side rails, you know the wood rails on the play fields, the original colors that haven't seen the light. That's the truer color they will find in a game. Mo also below the plastics, you can see on the where the uh, the posts are touched, they are a little dark because the the color posts tend to lick some inks that are mixed in between the the acrylics or the plastics. But that white is it, it ain't white. It's really uh, like. Um, you know, a, a yellowish color. So th that's a, a, a very ba basic color that you have to copy most of the time, the white base, because that color is the base for all the other colors. You know, if, if you paint it 100% white, it, w it won't look right because the other colors have that tinting already. So everything was printed over that yellowish white. So that's very important. You have to get that color right to get all the others to feel natural when you finish your play field. That's really important. Here, when you, you have some some of those deep scratches, you know, ball swirls and all the stuff, there's a good way to get rid of most of that. There's um, steel wool. You can find it in any Home Depot, and there are several different grades. You can start with a finer one. Uh, every, uh, this counts if you're going to clear coat it, because this will give you a dull surface, but you can get rid of all the rest of stuff that's lying over the play field. This is a very good way to get rid of all everything. And now you got the real colors. You, know, there's you can see the colors are really brighter. And that's what you have to get. So you have you have to copy those colors. Red perhaps is not hundred percent red. In the fact, this one has a ye little yellow on it. But you have to keep it in mind. Most of the time, those whites have a, a little touch of yellow, a little tiny touch of black, and sometimes a little red because they tend to a reddish, whiter color. You know, uh, so you have to keep that in mind to get all the colors right. So I'm gonna go with the painted techniques. As I told you, you have you, you have to have good brushes, soft, bri brittle brushes, um, because w what you need to get is, a, is an even surface. Although you're gonna get this, for instance, are all the colors prepared for that game. You know, there's three different shades of blue, white. That red is has white and yellow in it, and that yellow has red and black in it. So 
what you have to go is go try it. These are all um, oil-based animals. There, this ain't n none of uh, of the uh, acrylic water-based paints. These are all based, and you can see that you can match it perfectly, and it works fine. This was this is a, a, a playfield that was redone because someone put that you know sticker over it, and it had some bad issues with a clear coat, and you you know I'm gonna show you all the process. Regarding inserts, um, what I do, there are several ways to do inserts. Uh, there's a guy in Italy, we see, uh, one of the guys that I really, you know, I admire, and he, we both admire, admire each other because, you know, we feel like we, we have the same approach, you know. He most of the time uses stencil. The, he cuts sten stencils on vinyl and do the inserts by uh, using a small spray gun or um, something like that. But in the case of this one, graveyard at max, that that tiny layers can be cut on vinyl. So what I do most of the time in this case that you got all the inserts gone is apply a nice, uh, a small amount of clear over the insert so you can see it's pretty clear. It's like lo they look brand new and it got a smooth surface. And then I apply a small printed vinyl. You can clear, then clear coat over all, all that. You won't have any troubles. You have to try different clear, clear coats because all, all, not all the clears work the same and some of them have more solvents in it. And the problem is that they will work with the vinyl and start you know, peeling off or working ways. I have to rush, you know. But everything was hand painted. You trace the black lines, there's no big deal with that and you have to paint. There's, <laughs> there's no, no mystery on that. And that awful thing is gonna look pretty good. This is the playful before applying the, the clear coat, and that's clear coated already. Well, there's no mystery in that. This is also somebody was pretty creative about it. So that's what you get when you clean it all. I have to use several stuff to clean it up, but you go there and you you start to find places where you can hold on to. You you can grab to some of this, you know. Uh, one of the her shoulders or one line there, one there, and you complete the lines. This is the the, 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 the filler already there. You trace with a pencil and you start adding colors, like, you know, painting by numbers. These are the colors prepared and you start applying colors and there it is. So there's, there's practice, there's no, no mystery at all. You have to practice a lot, that's it. This is before clear coating. You see that the black is a little dull because that is the, that ink. Those inks are, 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 are dull, they're not shiny, but there's no problem. They will attach heavily to the play field and then you clear coat it and that's the finished playful. The good thing about it, that feels natural. When you see it, you don't feel like it's a, a, a new play field. The colors are you perhaps not as white because they were never that white. See, and, and it looks natural. That's what what I tried to get, to get, to go to a, you know, there's another example. There was a very damaged bonsai run. All the inserts have to be changed. Spider-Man. This is also parallel. They, they, this had a miler and someone took it off, like, oh, it's gonna go to get, get away. Yeah, no, it won't get away. Let me hurry. <laughs> I was late, I have to hurry. There it goes. You can see applause, you know. It, it, you, you, you have to feel it natural, you have to feel like no, nothing is done there. That's the good thing. That's what, what you try to go to, 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 to reach, which I, I don't know, sometimes it's complicated, but uh, I've done so many times. But you have to practice, that's no big deal. And also, clear coating. This is an Ali that I've done a couple of months ago here uh, in, in Florida, in fact, for a friend. And it had no face. But in this case, because all it was so damaged, what I had to do is to apply a very thin coat of care because the, the, the thinner inks, which are those um, markers 
used for doing um, ar architectural plans and those have that very, very fine line, which is all the traces that go in the face, won't, um, w won't look good if it, you don't have a smooth surface, uh, um, you know, it, it will start uh, peeling off or going ways, you know, because the, the relief of the playfield will gu guide your hand. So you have to have a smoother surface over there. So let's see, that's all the fine lines. And it's already clear coated. This I need, I think at that point, this is the first heavy coat of clear. And then the, 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 the very important thing, the most important thing about clear coating is to sand between each layer. You can apply one coat over the other because it won't attach. At, uh, at the first you think they will do, it won't. You have to sand it every single time. The first coat, because it's so thin, if you sand it, you might get some of the paint too. So you can use a steel wool. You use a steel wool that will follow the surface and you won't damage the paint beneath that. And then you can apply a heavier coat and then you start sanding, first by hand, and then you can use, you know, this is, this is after several coats and then the finished product. At some point, this is, you know, I, I that, that's a, I think it's a thousand grit sandpaper on a machine, but th this already has like five or six coats of clear. So this is the last one, then I s you sand it, you apply the last coat of clear, and then you polish. There's the machine polishing. I'm using now, uh, this, is, this is nice stuff, and it was one of my friends, I used 3M polishing compound. This is Wizards Mystic Polish. This is awesome. This is really good. You can get rid of a uh, thousand grit uh, sand, you know, scratches all of a sudden. It's miracle. You have to work it. You have to be careful not to get too much uh, temperature on the play field because it can warp or damage something. But th this is almost done, you know. And then it's another finer grain that you can shine it. There's the play field has a, that the way they come. So it was fast, <laughs> but I think a middle. Oh, last year I think you seen this keyword over there. <laughs> there it is. So well, I think I made it. <laughs> if you have any questions, I try to be outside and you know ask whatever.